What's up, y'all? Jesse Warden. Getting back this week. Apologize for not making videos. I've been busy uh, with clients and stuff. But yeah, so I've got a lot of questions, a ton of questions from you guys asking about all kinds of game-related things and JavaScript-related things, and it's it's great. These questions are great. Keep them coming. I just, uh, I'm kind of overwhelmed, so I've tried to put them in a list, and I'm going to tackle a few. So this week, number one is the raycasting I was going to talk about briefly. Let's, uh, let's show the raycasting, but first... Just a reminder for those of you in the southern hemisphere, you know, in the winter months, uh, if you're a programmer, don't forget your vitamin D. If you're not drinking milk or dairy or any of that, it has all kinds of health problems, so just make sure. Um, I say that because I'm a programmer, and as you can see, I hardly ever go outside, and that light is not the sun, so I'm not getting vitamin D by getting that, right? And I don't put milk in my coffee, so I have to watch out for that. So I'm just worried about you guys, and, you know, staying inside all day. It's cool to program, but. Not, not healthy to sit down, not healthy to not have vitamin D, okay? So, ray casting. Ray casting is a neat way of doing projectional collision detection. What? All that means is you, you, sh you shoot a line from like point A to point B, and in box CD you say, did it touch something? If yes, then cool, it'll tell you the points of actually where it touched, right? And you can also make it reflect, kind of like a mirror. So, it's it's uh, I'm not that experienced with it, but I've used it in my game for... Um, basically saying if like a line of sight for a zombie, for example. So can he see within about 10 feet in front of him? Uh, are you within that range? If so, he will go after you, whether it's via scent or sight, doesn't really matter. The point is, once you get near that particular zombie, he can see you. So rather than doing um, like tile-based collisions where you say, all right, metal tiles, like are these two characters, the main character, the player, and the zombie within this particular tile. If so, let's do collisions on just this area versus every object on the screen, right? It helps optimize. The problem with that is that you still have to have the game objects know about each other to say, all right, this zombie is aware of all characters on the screen, right? So the code isn't very encapsulated that way. So the other way is just to handle it and we'll let box 2 d handle it and say, look, do these objects collide? Well, yes, they do, but that implies that the player and the zombie are physically touching. So how do you do collision detection without using some kind of fancy sensor thing, right? You know, that um, if you're familiar with sensors, it's like a, an object that doesn't actually get affected by other and it can pass through, kind of like a, like pool, right? When you play pool and uh, the ball goes over the hole, it's a sensor. So the box of the object doesn't actually touch it, but it does register a collision of it. Well, ray casting, you just draw a line and say, are, are these things within like, you know, I don't know, 20 pixels. I always I use about 60 pixels of each other, right? So we're gonna show you that code right now on how it actually works, okay? I think some brand new code here. And I'll go to, uh, let's see, projects. Let's make a new one. Let's say uh, simple simple raycast. Make some kizode. Open sublime. Go to the documents. The documents in the folder. And we'll say main.lua. So you can see we have a, a sphere over there. Let's, uh, let's move it to the right just a tad. Okay. We'll make a sphere two. We get 20 as well. Sphere is 200. Okay, put it slightly below the other one. Got it. Let's make it a little bigger so we know that sphere two is the bigger one. Then we will borrow some of this uh, drag and drop code. I don't care about dragging the second one. I'm only interested in the first. Blah 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 blah. <clears throat> okay, we've got the focus event. Uh, let's see if I can actually drag now. Okay, we can. All right, now, you'll notice that in normal box 2D physics, we can take the sphere and say, add event to listener collision, okay? And what that means is, on collide, let's use a function for now. We can identify when this particular um, on collide when these things are colliding, okay? So let's show the uh, thing below here. You see how I'm dragging it. See it on collides? And it's pushing it away, right? So I can move it around, right? 
So the only way to actually detect when these things collide is when they physically touch. Now I can change them both to sensors. So we'll go in here and say is sensor is true, right? Now they actually don't physically have any touches, but they still register collision events, right? Now that's great, but how do we tell if they are like within 60 feet of each other? Well, we can use the distance formula and do all kinds of other math, but that's a lame sauce. Additionally, we have to do projections on lines, right, in different directions, right? So ray casting is not necessarily a cone. So a line of sight, like me seeing, you know, I have about, what is it, 70, 90, something like degrees line of sight. You know, most carnivores have, you know, kind of a, 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 a sh forward, you know, forward facing eyes and they see forward. So you might actually have to do multiple ray casts or draw a line from point A to point B and ask, tell me if it touched anything, right? You, you would actually do a few. So I kept it simple and I just said, look, let's just do one line. So let's do one line, but we're going to actually illustrate it with an actual physical vector line, okay? So that way you can actually see what, what does the ray cast look like, okay? Now there's a sample you can download from the Corona blog. This one I'll, I'll uh, push to GitHub and download this one as well. This is just another one to play with drag and drop versus using mirrors. They're using where you do a ray cast and it bounces off a mirror, which is really awesome, right? But it's really fast too. Right, so check this out. Code from Zombie Stick 2, and what it's going to do is draw a line, and it's going to turn, I believe, red if it hits an object, right? There's actually a, a collision between this object and the other object. And it's also going to turn uh, green if not, okay? So there's no, no actual things that it hit, okay? And we're going to do this over time, over time, or every, like, uh, I don't know, half a second. So we'll say function show ray casting stuff and home homes slice beef funk era. Okay? Good function name. Very clear as to what its actual function is. Okay. So we're gonna snag our local hits or what are the tables or list of points, x and y coordinates, that the ray actually hit, okay? Because again, array, uh, array is kind of like a, I believe, a sensor and where it actually can go through things. It's not necessarily blocked, per se. So, for example, if you played um, Far Cry 3, Far Cry 3 used a lot of uh, foliage, right? Bushes, trees, things like that, for line of sight between you and the enemies. So the, it was very easy for the, uh, their, them using ray casting to detect if a tree or a bush was between them and you, the player. So if you went behind the bush, they couldn't see you, right? So we're going to do something similar here where we say local hits are our sphere. Here's current X versus our sphere's current Y with the range. Now, what is the range? We're going to say a range of, let's do 60 for now. Okay, and then the sphere bounds. Um, I don't think I need the bounds per se. Yeah, so we'll just say from his x and y. And the width is, let's just say, plus the range. So we'll just say 60 pixels to the right. And on the y, nothing else. And the actual mirror bounce, we're not going to use, OK? So don't worry about that last parameter. If you'd like to see what that last parameter is, I can show you right now. Let me scroll down here to um, go to labs, you go to the SDK, you go to physics, dot raycast. If you look at the last parameter, it's closest, okay? All that really means is, is that it's basically the closest hit. That's all we're concerned about. What is the first first thing you hit that's nearest by? I don't really care about the you know the things that are in or whatever else are sorting that. Just tell me what is the closest thing that that ray actually hit between where I'm at launching the ray, like actually or looking or my cone of sight, line of sight kind of thing. That's what we're really interested in, okay? So that's why I always put zero. But you could also put, you know, closest or whatever else. You don't even have to put anything really. So I'll take that out. So x, y with an height, okay? Right? From the x, from the y, 2x, 2y, right? So we're saying from the sphere center, from the sphere center y, because we're not the registration point, default in the sphere center, right? To his center point plus the range, which is about 60 pixels to the right, okay? We're going to do the exact same thing with the line, and we'll copy, copy pasta, right? So the default for a line, and let's, uh, yeah, 
beef up for a line. And then we'll say, we'll borrow if the hits are actually there. Then we'll change the color. Okay. And we'll run this guy. Timer not perform with delay. Uh, every half second. Yeah, let's do 30, 300 milliseconds, okay? And we'll do it forever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever? Okay, so you can see that little blue line, okay? And we're going to do tween every time. Uh, I don't want to remove it, per se. Well, I guess I do. All right, we'll do a tween so you can see it fade in and fade out, basically, whenever it, whenever it does the raycast. Now, remember, raycasting is not continuous. The raycast collision detection is immediately done when you do it at the time, and it takes account of all where all the box 2D objects are and says, all right, here's the raycasting collision detection as of right this millisecond. And after that, it's done. So you get the list, and you can choose to use it or not. So we're going to do that again and again and again every 300 milliseconds, or about one-third of a second. Okay? So I'm going to have this guy fade out every second so you can see where it is. Okay? And we're going to remove that line in its tween. So you can see it's it's doing raycasting right there. See how it fades out? Sorry, I forgot uh, to do the timer indefinitely. Let's slow it down to about, mm, let's say one second, and we'll make the fade time 500 milliseconds. How about that? All right, so it'll do it every second. You can see that pulsating ray, ray? All right, so what we're looking for here is, are the hits actually not null? If they're null, this line will turn red, right? So it's blue here, right? Notice it takes into account not the rect or the bounds of the box 2D object, but the actual bounds of the box 2D geometry defined. Since these are circles, it'll actually take the radius of those circles, so it actually can you know, handle the little corners, right? A lot of collision detections are rectangular based, but box 2D can handle circles and bales. So notice, as they drag really fast, you can see kind of the echo of where the last raycast was, right? See, I know it's really hard to see that line. Let me, let me increase the uh, stroke. Not stroke width, it's width. It's uh, width, because clearly that's, you know, consistent with the API stroke width versus width. So, all right, so you can see it's a little bit bigger now. So every second we are doing a raycast and saying, hey, what's the, is there anything within 60 pixels from where I'm at now to the right of me, other than me, obviously, right? And the rate, it'll get, if you hit, it'll actually turn red and give you a list or a table of those X and Y coordinates. And as you can see, it's touching the circle, so it's going to give you those. So we can print those out if you'd like to see what they are. And it'll give you the actual hits of the object as well as what it hit. So we'll give, um, you know, if you want, by the way, if you look at the docs for this guy, recast, it will show you the actual object, right? So the object of what it is, right? Every array position is going to have the, the object you hit. And again, you can hit multiple things. You can hit like three spheres, okay? So the, the, each table in that list of tables will be the object you hit, where its position was, right, and actually where it hit on the object, which is cool. You can actually say where a bullet actually hit a particular piece of geometry or where the ray hit. So if you're doing, like, let's say a sniper rifle, um, you don't want the bullet to travel. Even though Boxy D is fast, you want to have, like, kind of an instantaneous hit, right? So you can say, okay, I hit the tank or whatever else on this particular part. So maybe certain parts have are weak spots, right? If you're doing those kind of games where you, you can only hit in a certain weak, weak position. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, what's that game, Zombies? Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Need more coffee. Resident Evil. See? It's magic. Resident Evil did that where almost every huge monster had a weak spot, right? So raycasting can allow you to say, yes, you hit these five objects or this object, but you hit it on this position, not there. So the raycasting can give you really nice, accurate examples of that, okay? And so we can print that out just to show you. I'm not going to do the show props, but you can see it. Okay, so I'll put this so it's nil, right? And then as soon as I put it here, it shows the actual table. And the table was going to have uh, a list of items with a one or two. So I'll show you how many hits did it have so it doesn't get mad. Hit amount. How about how many hits? You know, like English. Learn to speak English, Jesse. Roger that. All right, check this out. Boom, I got one hit. Now, what happens if we make a bunch of spheres? We'll do sphere three and sphere four. 
Copy pasta coating. The best coating ever. Copy pasta. Don't do this at home, kids. Or just do it and don't tell anybody. 240? Two, I don't know, 300 maybe? How many? There we go. All right. So you will see, if I put it here, it only hits the first one, right? Now, as you can see, we're hitting all these guys, all three of them with a ray cast, but the table is only returning one. Again, because we're concerned about who is the closest piece of geometry that we're hitting. I'm actually physically inside of the, the other sensor circle box to the piece of geometry, and it's only returning that one, right? This goes back to the ray cast particular closest, which is the default behavior. If you would like a sorted list, um, is, is my favorite. You can do fastest for any, but if you want sorted, it makes your code more readable. You can optimize later. Remember, readable code first, optimize later. Because you can optimize well-written, easy to read and understand code. It's hard to optimize code that's already optimized and blah, right? So we're going to take sorted as the last parameter for the recast. And because magic strings are awesome. Okay. Now we go down here, we'll get our one, now we'll get our two, now we'll get our three if we get a long enough raycast line, which I don't know if it works. But see, you can get multiple lines and you actually know what circle. You can see I'm turning those particular colors, right? To show you another example of where I'm using it, I'll actually open the uh, second version of Zombie Stick here, and you can see how a zombie uses it to identify what is the closest player that he can actually run to. And I'm going to Increase this to uh, iPhone 4 size, center it on the screen for you guys. All right. Now you can see his little blue line. It's hard to see, but it's above the zombie. It extends out about 10 pixels. So it'll turn red as soon as he gets within me, and he'll start grappling. Watch. See, it turns red, and now he's grappling me, and I lose energy because he's grappling. So I attack him to get away, or not, right? And that's how it can detect he's within a certain range. Now, obviously, a zombie can be a little larger. It doesn't actually have to physically touch. And the ray casting needs to be done a little bit quicker. But the point is, is that the line of sight, as well as the range in which he can grapple, right, range of attacks, you can actually use that range of attack to identify. So, for example, Strike, Strider, and a lot of older Nintendo games, you didn't have to be right next to the character to use certain swords, right? They would detect, are you within a certain you know, 60 or 30 pixel range, right? So ray casting can say... You know, did I attack and hit him? If so, it doesn't have to be pixel perfect. You're more concerned about, is it within 30 pixels, right? As you get upgrades, longer swords, you can increase the range of raycasting. So that's an example. Additionally, you can do multiple raycasts. These zombies, actually, for line of sight, it doesn't show it, but they do a vertical, a horizontal, and a uh, lower lower one vertical. It's a complete word. But you know what I'm saying. Like Kind of like this, this, and this, to have like a cone of raycasting. So within this range of uh, actual ray casting, did I see something within this you know, range, right? So that's another way he can actually detect particular players, okay? So that's ray casting in a nutshell. So again, my name is Jesse Warden. You got any questions, you can hit me up on my blog. You can hit me up, uh, don't forget to subscribe below. You can uh, email me on Twitter, uh, comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. The questions are great, guys, keep them coming. Um, I've got uh, 50 billion things to cover, some in more detail, some for the basics level, so some of the questions you ask actually end up being like three different videos. So it's, uh, it's really helpful. I appreciate it. And I uh, hope this is helpful.